Today, there are a number of commercial multiple factor risk models from which to choose. In this video, you will learn how factor models are constructed and how to enhance your own investment process by building a custom model. Using FactSet's alpha testing application, we will illustrate how factor models are built and help you conceptualize the process. Understanding the core data sets of a factor model is essential and we will review them briefly. The type of model being built will determine whether each data set shown here is provided or estimated. Now that we have seen the basic data requirements used in a pre-specified factor model, let's take a look at how to build them using alpha testing. To illustrate this, we are going to build a domestic cross-sectional risk model with fundamental factors. The Russell 3000 is the estimation universe for this custom risk model. The factors used in this cross-sectional model include beta, size, value, growth, momentum, volatility, liquidity, yield, and industry groups. Each factor is transformed. Accordingly, style factors are z-scored to get them on an appropriate scale and each stock's factor exposure is determined by its z-score. Industry groups are transformed into dummy variables. Each stock will have unit exposure to one industry group and zero exposure to every other industry group. Now that we have specified the factors to include in the model, the risk model engine will compute each stock's exposure to each factor. The exposures will then be used in a cross-sectional regression to calculate the factor returns. The factor returns are then used to estimate the factor covariance matrix. Stock-specific risks are estimated during the process as well. Let's take a look at the results to put this into context. For the analysis date of February 29, 2012, Apple has a high exposure to size and growth a negative exposure to value, and unit exposure to technology, hardware, and equipment. If we choose another analysis date, we can view Apple's exposure to each factor historically and determine how its characteristics have changed. Next, factor returns are calculated for each factor by running a multiple factor cross-sectional regression using the stock's forward returns as the dependent variable and stock level factor exposures as the independent variables. For the analysis date of February 29, 2012, growth stocks had a positive return and value stocks had a negative return. Based on the length of the look back period that was specified, a trailing 60 months of factor returns that are exponentially time weighted are used to calculate the covariance between each pair of factors and the variance of each factor. The collection of these form the factor variance covariance matrix. Each stock also has an amount of return volatility that is unique to itself and not attributable to the systematic factors used in the risk model. This is captured by the residual risk calculation. Up to this point, we have reviewed how a risk model is constructed. Now let's take a look at one way it can be used to analyze a portfolio. Specifically, we can use the risk model's factors to perform a multivariate attribution and determine how much benchmark relative performance is attributable to the portfolio's exposure to each factor. For instance, this small cap core manager gained over 200 basis points of positive excess performance from having a net negative exposure to the volatility factor over the one year period of analysis. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video on constructing multi-factor risk models.